Chapter 2 of the True and Thrilling Story of Sadhu Sundar Singh, the Apostle of the Bleeding Heart, dated 1920. Chapter 2 Some Secrets of His Power and the Significance of His Work as a Missionary. We have now a certain extent understood the way in which God has blessed and prospered the work which Sundar has done and is doing for the advancement of Christ's kingdom in this land and will have no hesitation in admitting that Sundar is a plant of his own right hand planting. For his word with regard to him has been and is being proved in its entirety. I, the Lord, do keep it. I will water it every moment. Least any hurt it, I will keep it night and day. Isaiah chapter 27 verse 3 He has not only been the means of several conversions from amongst the non-Christians, but his life and example, as we have already seen, has been a powerful instrument in changing the lives of so many called Christians who only share the name of Christ and not his spirit. This indeed has been a real triumph, as no hearts are harder than the hearts of perverse, quote, Christians, unquote, and no one deserves greater condemnation than those who have discovered the truth and rejected it. Let us now in this chapter try to understand a few traits of Sundar's character, which may lead us to a better understanding of the secret of his success as an evangelist and apostle. His selfishness. We have already seen how the thought of self never seems to suggest itself to him. His whole life, yea, his very looks suggest that I live for God and my fellow men, spirit, while his words sound like one sweet psalm of love. In Sardar's eyes, no duty is higher than the duty of serving his fellow beings, and no happiness greater than the happiness of loving God. Though it be with wounded feet and bleeding brows, and heart loaded with and oppressed by sorrow. This spirit, which is so conspicuous in everything he does and speaks, gives to men a real interpretation of the Spirit of Christ and presents Christianity in all its nobler and humane aspects. It is people like Sindar who compel men to acknowledge that Christianity condemns selfishness as utterly incapable of giving any satisfaction or happiness to man and that it teaches a sublime forgetfulness of self, a searching compassion for the sufferings of others and service to humanity of however humble, arduous and unrewarded in nature. His is a life of perfect faith and prayerfulness. Sundara's is, moreover, a life of perfect childlike faith in God and His promises and prayer is the key with which he opens the door to the highest of his victories over sin and Satan. One great lesson which many have learned and will learn from the story of his life is that every man who walks with God and finds him a present help in every time of need, who puts his promises to the practical proof and verifies them in actual experience. Every believer who with the key of faith unlocks God's treasures thus furnishes to the race a demonstration and an illustration of the fact that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Sudar Singh is such an argument and example incarnate in human flesh. Here is a man of like passions as we are, tempted in all points like as we are, who but believes God and is established by believing, who prays earnestly that he might live 
a life and do a work that should be a convincing proof that God hears prayers and that it is safe to trust Him at all times and who has furnished just such a witness as He desired. Like Enoch, he truly walks with God and his abundant testimony bore to him that he pleases God to those who have intimately known him and felt the power of personal contact with him. He is a living proof that a life of faith is possible, that God may be known, communed with, found, and may become a conscious companion in the daily life. Siddhar has proved for himself and for all others who will receive his witness that to those who are willing to take God at his word and to yield self to his will. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. That the days of divine intervention and deliverance are passed only to those with whom the days of faith and obedience are passed. In a word, that believing prayer works still the wonders which our fathers told of in the days of old. He, his speech is simple but effective. There is hardly anything extraordinary or unique about his addresses and sermons as far as scholarship and learning are concerned. For the Bible and nature, with her varied sights and sounds, are the only two books he has studied, and yet there is such an a restive charm in the words he speaks that every word seems to touch the hearer and go home to his inmost soul. If any have received the divine unction, Sundar is truly one of them. He has learned how the enticing words of man's wisdom make the cross of Christ of none effect. He takes simple texts out of the scripture and illustrates and illumines their meaning from facts of common life and his own experiences. His utterances are marked by original thought. The spirit is fresh and interesting. He makes religion a real thing, touching the lives of men and women. His sermons are not only an inspiration, they are nets for the souls of men. To the force of his simple arguments and homely illustrations are added the magnetism of his personality. After all, those who seek and save commend religion by the very fact that they do seek and save. In his audience, men and women become conscious of real Christianity, Christianity incarnate and beautiful in the human form, standing before them and talking to them. It is a reality. It is actual. The thing is there in flesh, breathing and living in treating them with words of purest love. They do not have to decide with their reasons whether this or that form of words is right, but with their eyes open to living Christianity, his influence on young India. Siddhar Singh is the herald of a new era, which is now beginning to dawn in the history of Indian Christianity, a wave of spirit of sacrifice and devotion to the cause of Christ is sweeping over the hearts of scores of India's Christian youth. Siddhar's quiet and yet in many respects aggressive life and influence have been really the chief inspiration of many young and enthusiastic souls who are now burning with a passion to save and serve India for Christ. The influence of his life has changed many young Christians' outlook on life and its purpose. There are few now who revel in the prospects of the lucrative career and a life of self-contentment, while there are many who are beginning to see visions of a greater day of labor for Christ and their mother lamb, and cherish the desire to see his kingdom established therein. Truly. The life of Sadhu Sundar Singh, as says a leading missionary of North India, is one of deep significancy for India. He is a character of whom all Indians may well be proud and has been called by God for a great spiritual work. Sundar Singh is indeed an answer to prayer 
and we who love India welcome his appearance as one who heralds a new and better day. Sardar Singh does not come or stand alone. He is typical of the new era which is being ushered in for, for Christian India. Others who have caught the same vision, heard the same call, and explored the same source of power will soon be manifest to all. God is working mightily in the hearts of Indian Christian young men, and we have only to wait for the results. Let us pray as we wait. As a rule, great movements are supposed to proceed from great men only, and so we are apt to neglect the real significance of the almost unknown and unlearned laborers of the Lord's vineyards, such as Sundar is. But let us remember that it was the fishermen of Galilee who changed the destinies of nations. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised. Yea, God has chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. Let us stop here and say, no more or less we should lay ourselves open to the charge of merely praising Sundar. Nay, we praise not him, but him, who giveth men power to work wonders in his name, God. Only time will reveal, and God will reward the work of his servant, who is doing for the lost humanity of India. End of chapter 2. Recommendations for those who find Sadhu Sadar Singh inspirational in India. There are two other uh, links that you'll find down below in this description that will lead you to two others that worked in India who were phenomenal. Praying John Hyde is one. Another one is Carmichael. She was fantastic. This fantastic work in India did. And you must, must find all you can on her and read and also I'm praying John Hyde which I have everything of his up here on YouTube for you also for those who want to build up their faith in God and in his answers to your prayers I would recommend highly highly the books on George Mueller that I have up here on YouTube I have all of his works up here also the books from um, Hudson Taylor, a fantastic on God answering prayer. There's many more on this site, but these are the ones that I would recommend specifically for those who are desiring more from Sudar Singh. Please continue to pray for me and pray for this ministry. God bless.